Hello all, welcome to uh, my tutorial series on deep learning and data sciences. In the first tutorial, I am um, just going to give you a walkthrough on time series forecasting uh, with uh, uh, deep learning techniques such as LSTM or long short time memory network. So the problem statement which I selected for uh, this particular tutorial is energy consumption forecasting. What does it mean is that energy consumption either we know that we all consume either electricity or gas that is the natural gas uh, for some of our day-to-day -day energy requirements such as running our computers or you know, like operating our uh, our, uh, our microwave or, or stove or, or vehicle or, or heater or cooling machines etc etc so as some of these things are natural resources which needs a production and knowing well in advance how much the demand will be it will be always very very handy information for such energy companies to uh, basically procure additional additional supply as and when it is required when it comes to electricity there is a serious problem the alternative current or the ac current which we consume today for our household requirement which can be produced but cannot be stored for a long time so most of mostly we can say that the, the production dissemination and consumption should happen in almost in a near future real time to um, um, uh, to make the supply more smooth but the problem with energy consumption is that uh, uh, or the electricity in, in the world is that there is always increased demand and there is a lack in the, in the supply so always energy companies what they are trying to do is that uh, they look into uh, uh, they look into, into into the future demand and try to procure or increase or decrease their their sub, uh, supply or the production depending up, uh, upon the emerging trends and needs so that that is being affected by different uh, different conditions such as the weather or, or some of the festivals etc etc so many factors may be affecting affecting that so I'm just taking a smaller sized uh, or, or a reduced version of that electricity consumption forecasting. <coughs> what, I'm, what I mean by or the meaning of reducing is that I just downloaded the energy consumption, historic energy consumption for my own apartment unit in San Jose and I downloaded around uh, 10 month worth of my uh, energy consumption details uh, from my energy supplier PG&D. And I'm trying to uh, uh, trying to build a model to forecast what will be my energy consumption. Okay, so that is the, that is, that is what the overall problem statement which we are going to cover in in this tutorial. So uh, the, now uh, let's look into the key attributes of the data. Uh, so the data contains information such as the the start time and time of consumption. So the start time and the difference between the start time and end time will be something like a 15 minutes interval as PGNG records the energy consumption in, in 15 minutes interval and uh, the consumption is recorded in kilowatt um, kilowatt and the cost associated with what may be the kilowatt hour consumption is being also recorded there in, in dollar values. Um, and that is pretty much the useful attribute uh, attributes in, in, in the data. So now uh, let's let's start uh, uh, doing everything um, in a pretty hands-on mode. So um, I'm um, using Python as my tool chain. I'll be using uh, uh, Scala and, and uh, Keras as my primary tool chain for building the deep learning model and then the conventional model. I'm using Pandas uh, for basically the data manipulation. Uh, the time series data manipulation, data loading, and data preparation, etc. And the entire tutorial is is, uh, is built on a, on an Azure Python notebook, which is a convenient way um, to create reproducible research here. So let's start from the uh, from the uh, from the 
the very beginning of my do Python notebook. Um, here, what I'm doing is I'm just importing all my required libraries such as matplotlib, uh, pandas, and then I'm just importing the US calendar, federal calendar from the pandas time series library, and I'm, I'm importing the bokeh uh, library for interactive exploration of the data. And uh, I've just uh, saved the data as d202 uh, csv in, 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 in my um, computer so that's a csv file so this is a quick view of the csv file which says that the, uh, the csv contains type the header type date start time end time usage unit cost and nodes basically the nodes field has nothing in it okay the so type is uh, written as electric usage yeah i don't have any other any other subscription from pg90 so it's very really obvious that only electric usage is there and then um, I'm having something called date here, and uh, uh, then then the, then the uh, start time is recorded here. Then the end time uh, and uh, how much electricity I use. So it means that on eleventh, uh, eleven one two thousand sixteen, I used uh, zero point zero seven kilowatts in the in the first fifteen minutes, and I have to pay like almost um, for, uh, 0.1 cent as a cost for the electricity so this entire data is starting from 11 1 2016 um, to uh, 9 30 2017 the data is available there that means till uh, september uh, 30s of this month the data is available there there from the pg and website so i'm just going to um, uh, load this data uh, in, into uh, into pandas data frame and start doing my data massaging. So just loading the data here and just taking um, two sample. You can see that the data, the, the head or, or the first two rows from the data is exactly exactly same as we already seen in the in the, in the Excel file. So we can see that we have a date field here, a start time field. Here here and the end time field here but there's no such things like date and time combined available here so uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a date and time field in this data by concatenating the date and the end time so why I'm taking the end time here because the end time denotes when exactly the conception is being uh, recorded there so that means when I concatenate 11, 1, 16, 0, 0, 14, so that means in the, in the 14th minute of midnight, I use 0 0.07 kilowatts. So I just wanted the exact time when this usage is being measured there. And from that time, I can uh, basically extract uh, a bunch of new features uh, in my data set. Um, to make my prediction more easy than the conventional autoregressive moving away with Arima or any um, uh, Arima or any uh, or, or any other more such of such kind of like time series forecasting technique. So rather than just approaching this as a like conventional uh, time series forecasting, I'm putting that as a multi-variate time series forecasting here. So in that way. Um, uh, we we are trying to like look at uh, look at the time series forecasting in the, in the newer dimension here. So, so what we see in, in the case of like um, uh, Arima or any such model, we need the time and the conception only. But from the date time, um, what I'm trying to achieve here is trying to construct more and more features so that um, uh, so that I can I can make more robust model by accommodating different factors or different other environmental attribute which is contributing to the energy consumption on a given 15 minute time frame okay so after I'm, I've created this uh, date and time field okay um, now what I'm going to look is that I'm going to create a new uh, field in, in my data called date type what does the day type means is that whether a given day 
it's a working day or a weekend so pandas uh, the data team um, data in, in, in pandas provides a convenient way to identify a working day that means monday through friday um, uh, we can identify or any day we can identify easily from uh, from uh, from a daytime object in, 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 in pandas and then we can classify that in a working day or non working day so what the logic i'm applying is that the day starting uh, to uh, from 1 to 5 I'm, I'm categorizing it as a working day and 6 and 7 i'm, I'm putting it, it, it as a uh, non working day so if it is a working day i'll uh, i'll give uh, the variable 1 otherwise it's a zero so uh, it's, a, it's a binary variable I'm creating there as a data type. Okay, so now, so we create the date time from the date time. I've created whether a given, I create a new field called whether a given day um, is a working day or not. Now, just wanted to understand out of the date time frame which we are like from November to uh, September uh, date frame in 16 to 17 period in in, in the data set. Just wanted to under, understand which of these days are federal holidays in, in this country. So for the same, what I did is that I was I just uh, imported my US federal holiday calendar uh, attribute from the uh, uh, from the Pandas time series utilities, and I'm just creating a calendar object. Okay, from the calendar object, what I'm saying is that get. Um, get the holidays by the minimum date and maximum date so in my data there is the, so there will be a minimum date that means the starting of november 1st and the ending by september um, 30th of 2017 so find all the holidays which falls between these two date ranges, and then uh, i'm just creating a uh, um, creating a variable called is holiday so if any of this uh, uh, date date falls in a holiday there will be uh, true or false value will be applied in my data frame so an is holiday will be again another um, another uh, say uh, binary uh, variable which I am creating with, with true or false values so if you look into the data now what we can see that I am seeing like day type is zero that means um, this is a uh, it's a holiday okay uh, and uh, and uh, this holiday, whether this, this, this is a Saturday, I'm sorry, this is a Saturday or Sunday, and uh, each holiday means it's a uh, the particular day is not a not coming under any of the federal holidays such as Thanksgiving or Christmas or New Year, any any such uh, any such day. So from date and time, now we created two additional uh, features or attribute in the data. The first data is the type of day which says that whether the day is a working day or uh, or a weekend what is the significance of working day or non-working day uh, in such kind of uh, energy consumption data is that if it is a working day the number of people present in in, in, in a household will be uh, almost nearly half or maybe zero depending upon the occupant uh, occupants information so that plays a very critical role in, in the energy consumption assume that there is a Three member family if three people are there at home and all the time then obviously there will be more occupants working uh, working there so for example somebody may be charging their mobile phone a laptop is being operated TV is being operated uh, maybe it may be using a fan or AC more lights will be operated during the daytime so you can see that a, a steady energy consumption going there so since it's a weekend so you may have some special cooking going on there you may bake or uh, boil something so more electri electricity is being used in your in, in your kitchen also so all these things basically affects there so that is that's a specific significance of the data so if there are three member and one is a student and one is working and this one is non-working that means during the daytime the maximum population at home will be like only one person and that will be between the like say 8 30 to 6 between 8 30 to 6 p.m 8 30 a.m to 6 uh, 6 p.m so during that time again the number of uh, electric uh, or electricity consuming 
practice use will be very less maybe a tv a laptop occasional charging of a mobile phone then occasional cooking may uh, may happen but the moment after 6 pm all the three members are at home suddenly somebody brews coffee tea opens the fridge the consumption starts up right that's the significance of day type variable here then what is special about holiday means is that if it's assume that we are uh, or we are on 25th of uh, december obviously it's a it's a celebration time we we obviously make uh, uh, make additional uh, dishes uh, we may cook uh, some turkey or we may take, make a uh, spicy beef curry or something so it all adds up consuming additional electricity in, in, in the kitchen area so these two variables say that whether our increased consumption has something to do with a particular uh, day type or, or a holiday so I'm just stopping uh, creating some of such time related feature here. You can be more creative in this area and you can try to create some more extra variables um, such as you can divide the day into different parts such as early morning, morning, that day and evening and night time. So what it signifies such kind of a variable is like <coughs> Typical, in, in a typical household, the day may start by 6 a.m. Everybody sort of wakes up, you brew your coffee, tea, your breakfast, cooking, the lunch cooking, everything happens. Maybe all these things may come to an end almost by say like 8.39 at time. And this time it, it will be a busy consumption time or it may be referred as a peak time consumption, uh, consumption, uh, consumption uh, for, the, uh, for the electric equipment there. And then nine o'clock, like people go for their own daily routines, go to office, school, college, etc. So now the routine equipments may be only functioning there. So, uh, and in the evening, you come back again, you brew tea, coffee, make dinner, and then all these things uh, uh, again starts consuming more and more power. So now we can see that dividing the day into multiple parts is adding additional information about your data what affects the consumption there and plus you can even bring some external data which your energy consumption company or the energy company may not bring such as the weather data you can go to the NOAA website and now download more data about you, your region and what was the temperature etc so why does temperature wind rain or any such attributes affect the energy consumption because if the outside temperature is 10 degrees centigrade it is very obvious that you put um, the room heater on that consumes more energy obviously if the outside temperature is 35 degrees centigrade you put your AC on you may put a fan or you may connect on more portable uh, coolers there so it again starts uh, increasing the um, and in increasing the energy consumption in your household so apart from the features which we just constructed here you can construct more features or you can tie an external data such as the weather information or, or any such information which you can grab from external sources which may have a significant influence uh, in your electricity consumption can also be used here but in the purview of this tutorial i'm not trying to bring all such uh, additional data or, or anything but you can try it from your end and see how well you can make the forecast uh, yeah forecast uh, forecast in in future so uh, it's, it's it's one of the creative way of doing more and bringing more and more feature or doing the so-called feature engineering feature addition etc to make uh, uh, your forecast more and more accurate so now uh, after this, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create some more additional variable. Say basically, I'm trying to um, trying to create uh, uh, five new uh, additional additional fields or data that is nothing but copying the the previous five energy consumption details uh, details. Say I'm in uh, I'm in, in in the time of like 14th minute of the day. That means um, uh, 12 14 so what I do is that I'm just trying to copy 
uh, five fifteen minutes information in there. So Pandas gives a very, very basic utility to do that um, using the shift function. So I'm just doing that magic here, and somewhere you will be having some zeros coming there. So I'm just um, just filling those zeros, and I just created um, five additional uh, additional attributes: the data set as T1, T2, T3, T4, and T5, which is basically so like. Um, um, uh, copying information from the previous file so I'm just taking the top 10 information you can see that say in, the, in this one so you can see that the t1 information you are seeing that I'm copying the usage from here to here and this information is coming here this information is coming here so you can see that the information is flowing from here to here to here to here to here so I'm copying the previous observation here, um, such as an, a reference uh, um, to how much I, uh, I consumed in the past. So that also sometimes affects how much I was consuming earlier, also affects how much I may consume next sometime. So I'm just creating that that uh, attribute here in, 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 in my data. So if you look here, is holiday is now appearing as a like a true or false or a string variable kind of thing. I'm just trying to convert that into into into, into, into the basically um, uh, integer type so that it will be now appear as uh, um, as zero or one, and uh, um, and and now you can see that the is holiday is now appeared as zero or one kind of a variable here. So if you look here, I don't need the type information, the date, the start time, the end time. Obviously, I need the usage because that is what my target is or that is what I'm going to predict. The kilowatt or the unit information is not required. Cost I'm not uh, I'm not going to use in my forecast notes is not required. And obviously, the date time I'm not required right now for forecasting because I already decomposed the notes field and now uh, something which is better than the date time field here. And date type is holiday T1 to T5. These are going to be my primary uh, information for creating my model. So just just demonstrating here how how I'm just uh, creating a clean data set or or a data set which has only the required information for building the model. So this is so far what we did is that we just created um, what we did is that we just created a bunch of additional attribute and also I was just telling about how can we create uh, more attributes um, um, to the data okay. so now let's try to see uh, or, or we can have a closer look on what is there in the data okay so uh, I'm just using the bokeh library from anaconda um, to create um, an interactive uh, plot of the entire data so you can see that it's now giving you a, a, a plot of the entire data or of the of the say like the 10 months data is being plotted here so I can I can just zoom and show you some of, uh, some of the information I can zoom and show you yeah so this is a beauty of using a bokeh library so it, it has an option to like Pan and zoom the data uh, in a much 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 better way. So you can see that. So it's too much. You can you can have a close look on the data by zooming here. Otherwise, you have to slice and dice the data again and again. If you use uh, libraries like ggplot or, um, or 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 uh, conventional matplotlib kind of a, uh, uh, of a library here. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. So you can see that there, there's lots of peaks and worries in, in, in this time series data. Basically, that signifies that the peak signifies that whenever I'm, I'm um, using more elect electricity, while well, it means that I'm just using electricity in a very steady manner, so that I'm running some of the routine um, routine electric um, uh, appliances such as fridge or some some decorative lights, etc. So let's take a more uh, closer look on, on the data. 
okay so i'm just trying to extract only the the data from the christmas week okay you can see that the christmas week means i'm just starting from 20 the december 30th to 26 27 to midnight uh, uh, in my data you can you can see that yeah there are certain peaks always visible in, 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 the, in the early morning in the evening morning and evening the so morning evening the peaks are mostly appearing here in the morning evening and there is almost a steady consumption uh, uh, throughout the day okay and and uh, in the night you can see some sort of a uh, uh, some sort of a spikes appearing here because it's, it's a really cold weather so we may need a room heat up, a heater to heat up our, our, our home so that we can stay warm inside kind of thing so that is what the, the data more closer look of the data reveal here so let, let's let's zoom down to a single day so i'm just going to uh, the new year day at 2017 you can see that throughout the night we were having like uh, uh, consuming about 0 0.4 kilowatts per hour uh, and uh, uh, till say like something like 8.39 and suddenly we switched to our, 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 our uh, room heater and started making tea, coffee, lunch, dinner, everything. So it, it starts, the consumption goes into its peak. And now we are taking rest after our grand new year lunch. It's going to be the evening, the dinner time and night. Uh, at the evening time, so the tea, coffee, for to keep us warm. Everything is being prepared here at the, at the fourth, uh, four p.m. Almost by four p.m., we can have a steady uh, electricity consumption peak appearing here in the fourth hour, and again straight having a steady light, warming our dinner, and then we are going to uh, fire up our room heater. That's where it's on. You see, so in in, in, the, in the zoom data of a single day, you can see. All the story you can narrate all the story, all the story of what your family is doing throughout the day if you know if you know it in a in a, in a, in a, in a better manner. That's what the data clearly signify. So that is what I was talking earlier. So the, the better if you can construct more time related features from your data, the better it 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 is try to explain you how good uh, or how the or what affects why the consumption is going up and down. Uh, in, 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 uh, in your apartment building so those features some of those features we already already um, uh, can have already constructed from our data some are just given us a hint so now what I'm going to do is that us we are going to start our, 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 our data science uh, model building so you know that as a standard practice we need to create train validation and testing data so what I'm going to do is that uh, I'm going to keep all the data till uh, uh, seventh month uh, of 2017 as my training data, which comes around uh, eight months worth of data as my training data. Um, and uh, I'm just trying to keep one month data as my validation data um, and I'm just taking two month worth of data as my final testing data for the uh, 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 for the model. So this is what I look of the slice of data which which we created here. Okay, and and from the data, so what I do is I just just pull out uh, the required information such as day type, holiday time one to time five and the target variable usage here. So I just pull out those information from the train test and validation. So you can see the, the, the train data, uh, train data and, and the test data and the validation data, how it looks, okay. So to start with, I need a very, very baseline uh, model. So, uh, what I'm going to do here is like I'm building a very uh, minimal random forest uh, regression model as my baseline model. Just just in the in the case of reference to see how the model works, etc. So I'm just importing the SKLN um, uh, random forest libraries here. 
and um, uh, and a min max scalar for the uh, like um, basically to scale my data etc and here in, the, in this box what i'm trying to do is that i'm just creating my train uh, x and y variables for my training that means uh, that means that means my dependent and independent variables i'm extracting from the data from training test and validation data and i create the object of my scalar extended scalar or the data scalar function and uh, the random forest regressor so i'm not doing much of a parameter tuning here in my random forest regressor as um, uh, i just just use the default values there so um, but me it's not going to be a, a very very robust model i know just since i'm not tuning the uh, tuning the tree or or i'm not going to uh, like fine tune the depth of the tree etc nothing it's all all a very basic as specified in the in, in the scale and maybe i'm going to use it here and the only thing which i'm going to use is an end job is equal to five that means it's a parallel it will run five jobs to five uh, parallel jobs in uh, to build the model that basically makes the model building a little bit faster that's it so that's not a hyper parameter that's basically an, uh, uh, an execution one and now i'm just going to scale scale all my data here um, uh, with with uh, the standard scalar um, uh, uh, function here and now Trada we are just trying to build the model okay since it's where it's a parallelized to a number of jobs five and i'm having a like quad core machine so it, it, it built the model in a fraction of a second really you can see that what are the hyperparameter here from this output so i'm using the bootstrap uh, msc as the criteria and maximum depth i never specified for the tree the maximum features it is determined with auto algorithms there um, the impurity decrease and uh, minimum impurity split etc are very very normal as specified in in, in, in the library and i'm not using ob scoring or uh, nothing okay so even the warm starting is also not specified there so the default parameter settings are being used except in the case of number of jobs and they just built a very basic model here so let's see uh, what is the r square value in my validation data so the r square value is 0.26 that means it's able to explain only 26 percent of the variance in the data uh, data set uh, from my model so yeah that means that oh the model is not so good and let's see how much is the, what what's a r square value in my test data and the test data also having the r square of 0 0.32 that means 32 percent of the variance is being explained here um so let's try to like basically visualize um uh, visualize the result um to visualize the result what i do is that i just added the random forest predictor result to my test data data frame and other data frame and this is how it looks my predictions will be here you see that the usage of 0 0.03 i predict rate as 0 0.02 here the usage of 0 0.04 i predict rate as 0 0.06 so you can see that yeah some obvious um, uh, obvious additional predictions i did okay let's see by how good our prediction is okay so you can see that uh, from this data so you can you can so let me zoom it so we're almost there kind of a almost very close but not so close that's what i say the model is not so robust we are some of the peaks and valleys we are trying to replicate but not very close to those peaks and valleys okay and here you can clearly see that this is my actual usage i am predicting way too high than that see look here also i'm predicting way too high than what actually i was consuming there so that means the model is not performing well wherever it is required but if you look here some of the peaks it was able to clearly make a matching predictions here so let's 
make a very close look. So how much electricity I was consuming in September 13 and how much that is of September and how much I'm predicting. Oh, see, here you can see that uh, in the midnight it is saying that I may use uh, almost 1.5 kilowatts, but my actual uh, consumption was 0.5 kilowatts kind of thing. But between 8 a.m. to 11 a.m., the prediction, yeah, kind of look like matches but not exactly because the peaks are predicted in a different way maybe it may might have indirectly guessed that i might have wake up by 8 45 or something maybe <laughs> okay after 12 so it's saying that like okay this this spot is is the predictions are way too high so yeah well from the r square value and from the plots it's very ob obvious that okay the predictions are not going to be good but as I promised, this is not deep learning. We just do a, a typical ensemble or, or, or a tree-based model here. Oh, that's a random forest one. So our objective is to build a, uh, uh, build a deep learning model. So here, uh, what I'm trying to build is, a, uh, is an LSTM model. So LSTM means long short-term memory network, which is uh, proposed in 1997 uh, as, a, uh, as a neural network enhancement. And uh, by the uh, advent of all these new deep learning frameworks, libraries, and GPU, CPU, TPU, VPU kind of all this revolution, this kind of uh, uh, algorithm becomes very popular apart from the convolution neural network, which we use for uh, image, uh, image, image based uh, machine learning or data science or AI models for natural language processing, time series forecasting, or any kind of sequence, um, sequencing problems in, in, in machine learning, we use LSTM nowadays. So this is a kind of an, uh, considered as a kind of an enhancement to the, uh, the recurrent neural network, which which always look back in the, in the previous observation and tries to make the prediction. So you can, you can have a deeper uh, reading uh, from Andrej Karpathy's tutorial on, on deep learning and you can try to understand what is RNN and what, what is LSTM and there are lots of online material available there. Um, I may not be the right person to give a theoretical view on, on that so since it's already the internet is already filled with um, tons and tons of material on all this deep learning aspect rather I, I thought I'll just focus on, on, on the practical aspect. So, I'm using a Keras with uh, TensorFlow, not with Tieno or, or CNTK, just with TensorFlow, Google TensorFlow library, and just importing the basic um, um, basic library, uh, such as the sequence, dense, and LSTM APIs here. So this part, I'm, I'm defining my model. So then my, I'm defining a sequential model. I'm adding an LSTM with an input shape of one and same. One and, uh, one and seven, that means one dimension and seven attribute is there. I'm adding a dense layer here and I'm using the loss as a mean square error and an atom optimizer is being used here as, as my optimizer. So this is a very uh, basic, uh, 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 very, very elementary model, LSTM model here. You can be more creative and you can add uh, a stacked LSTM uh, layer after this particular one, you can add an LSTM with stateful, uh, you can add a stateful LSTM or or non-stateful LSTM, etc. here. Uh, and you can make the model more robust, but for the time being, let's try to uh, make, uh, make, make this as very simple. So, the data which we already created, the, the, the scaled data is basically in, in, in two dimensions. So what uh, the LSTM model expect is, is a three-dimensional data. So I just try to make it as a, as a three-dimensional data. So my training data and the validation data, I'm just going to reshape into three-dimensional. Later, I will make my validation data also um, to be a three-dimensional one. Okay. So I'm, I'm trying to fit the model and I'm supplying my validation data here and I'm saying that batch size is equal to 96 and just run 10 epochs and um, and just run the model. So in a, in a single batch, it will feed 96 observation to this model and it will be having 10 epochs or 10 iterations happening there, okay. 
So let's 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 have a render model process here. Okay. So this is is running. You can see that it's running pretty fast. So it's completed five epochs, six epochs, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. So now our training process or the model building is completed in 11 seconds I would say and let's try to see how the training and the validation loss looks okay you can see that the training um, loss is slowly decreasing and so the test loss but we can see that it's almost getting stagnant here in 10th epoch maybe we might have made a while wise choice believe okay so we can see that the training uh, the training loss is 0.04 and the validation loss is 0 0.029 yeah from the given data and given hyperparameter again in the case of this model also i didn't do much of a hyperparameter tuning so we can say that this is just working model uh, not a robust model so we, we have to do more of hyperparameter tuning to make the model more read uh, more uh, robust uh, uh, robust and efficacious so this just, just uh, reshaping my testing data and I'm, I'm predicting the data so the prediction happened and I'm appending that into my test uh, my test data so let's let's let, let's try to see uh, the the prediction here so I'm just plotting the actual usage actual usage is blue line the random forward prediction is uh, green and deep learning prediction is red so let's zoom the data uh, looks like um, we are pretty much closer to the random forest prediction only not so good that means we may have to enhance the model a bit uh, 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 more better um, so let's take a very very closer look on, on, on how, how we predicted uh, in the case of 30 September 2007 and you can see that um, rather than like predicting all these peaks uh, my model predicted uh, uh, all these peaks as a very steady one that is 0 0.05 uh, or 0.5 kilowatts throughout the day but the the peak in the morning was being almost explained like it is almost in the closing closed or in a closed prediction and in the afternoons and pretty much in the in the evening i'm uh, almost in the in the in the, in the, in the, in the late nights also to be able to come there maybe a bunch of additional hyperparameter tuning may may help us to make this uh, make the model pretty much better so in this tutorial what we see is like how we can prepare the data for time series forecasting so i just showcased a couple of very elementary techniques but i just give a hint on how we can create additional features from the time series data and uh, as a library pandas is a great library to create such additional features there and uh, you can you can bring additional data from the NOAA weather site etc um, um, to to bring uh, extra data and make make your forecast uh, more more better and uh, at the same time uh, i just showcase how we build a very baseline model with random forest uh, regressor uh, regression technique and uh, then we built an lstm very simple lstm model um, yeah but no, both of our models were not so great in, in terms of its prediction capability but um, uh, it, it serves as a uh, as a basic tutorial on how we can create an lstm model so in some of the next version i will come up with a stacked uh, um, stacked lstm models and L rnn models or or uh, gru models in time series forecasting i hope 
you will be able to get a quick glance on, on it i'll be uploading this uh, ipython notebook in my github and in the, in the in the anaconda libraries for your future reference the data set will be also be available there you may find another alternative data sets in the uk government's open data website for for half hourly energy consumption yeah the principle doesn't change there here i am getting around uh, 15 minutes interval uh, energy forecasting uh, 15 minutes interval energy data in the uk we have the smart smart meters are measuring it with 15 minutes if you're living somewhere around um, around pan asian regions you may have uh, singapore or, or, or some other countries give again the 13 minutes interval data so you can you can you can use any of such data to make your own experiment experiments so most of such data sets are available um, available in the, in the open domain to experiment with this kind of time series forecasting so sometimes later we may look into look look how uh, these uh, deep learning techniques uh, 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 how much it is better than the traditional um, time series forecasting technique as uh, autoregressive moving average ARMA or autoregressive integrated moving average ARIMA techniques etc so I hope you we will be able to make this as a hands-on exercise by replicating the same workbook and, um, and the same data set or by your own data set um, enjoy enjoy your enjoy your learning thanks for watching thank you